How's it going YouTube? If you enjoy my videos, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe as it helps these videos out with the YouTube algorithm. Make sure that you hit that notification bell as well so that you can be notified whenever I upload a new video of an area near you. In this video, I'll be driving the length of Shaner Road in its entirety. It begins on the east side of Detroit and continues north for 23 miles through suburbia. As I mentioned, Shaner starts off in Detroit at the intersection with McNichols, or as some people call it, Six Mile. We're not too far from the most crime-ridden areas of inner-city Detroit. Nonetheless, you can tell that there are plenty of abandoned buildings and vacant lots on both sides of Shaner for the stretch that it goes through in Detroit. If you're unfamiliar with my videos, I do speed up my videos in order to show more in a less amount of time. This video in particular is sped up to 200%, so it goes twice as fast as normal. You can always keep track of the real time that it takes me to drive in the lower left corner of the screen. Also, if you're interested in seeing more of what Detroit looks like, make sure to check out my Detroit playlist where I have videos going through all kinds of different areas of the city. As we cross 8 Mile, we also leave the Detroit city limits. 8 Mile serves as the boundary between Detroit and its northern suburbs. If you haven't, make sure that you check out my video on 8 Mile, and if you're interested in seeing the other mile roads, you can check out my Detroit Mile Road playlist. The suburb that we're currently in is Warren, and it's basically a blue-collar middle-class suburb. When you look at the crime stats for the city, it shows that both the violent and property crime rates are just above average, which isn't terrible. Warren is Michigan's third largest city behind Detroit and Grand Rapids, as it's home to 134,000 residents. General Motors and Fiat Chrysler both have assembly plants in the city limits. In Warren, the median household income is $47,000 per year, and 20% of the residents are living in poverty. 18% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher, and the median value of owner-occupied housing is $111,000.
The war in public schools rate around average performance, so this isn't the worst place to send your child to school. However, other suburbs provide better options. The trade-off is that Warren is very affordable and that you can definitely find a lower cost home in a decent neighborhood and get more bang for your buck. We're almost out of Warren, and before it's too late, I also want to say that if you live here, you're going to want to watch out for all the wannabe M&Ms. M&Ms home turf consists of the area within the Detroit city limits just south of Warren and the city of Warren. So I ask, will only the real Slim Shady please stand up, and will all the others please just go get a job somewhere? Sterling Heights is Detroit's second largest suburb, and if Warren keeps losing people and Sterling Heights keeps gaining people, Sterling Heights will soon overtake Warren as the third largest city in the state and the biggest suburb of Detroit. Sterling Heights has only 1,000 less people than Warren as it's home to 132,000 residents. Sterling Heights is basically a good mix of blue collar and upper middle class. And just like with Warren, Sterling Heights has a high profile of auto manufacturing jobs located within the city as Fiat Chrysler and Ford both have a large presence. Public schools in Sterling Heights perform well above average as it's a good place to send your kids to school. The median household income in Sterling Heights is $63,000 and 28% of adults 25 and older hold at least a bachelor's degree. The median value of owner-occupied housing units is $175,000, which is still pretty affordable in the grand scheme of things as Sterling Heights has well below lower than average crime rates.
To the right is the Lakeside Mall, which is doing pretty well in terms of keeping the space occupied. That's pretty impressive as there's another giant mall a mile east on Hall Road. It's not very common in the year 2020 to see two separate malls doing well in that close proximity to each other. Shelby Township is home to 80,000 residents, and as of 2020, only a very small portion of the township in the extreme northeastern area is undeveloped. Shelby Township is a newer suburb, so it has newer housing stock and attracts wealthier people. The median value of owner-occupied housing in Shelby Township is $232,000, 34% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher, and the median household income is $74,000 per year. The public schools in Shelby Township perform a lot higher than average. Shelby Township, as I mentioned earlier, is a newer suburb. In terms of well-known people, the most well-known person from here would be Kyle Connor, who was a 17th overall pick in the 2015 NHL Draft, selected by the Winnipeg Jets. Connor also played hockey for the University of Michigan.
Washington Township is the last suburb that Shaner Road travels through. Suburban expansion hasn't quite dominated the township just yet, but it seems like it's slowly but surely devouring the once rural area. 28,000 people live here in the year 2020, and that's up 14% from the 2010 U.S. Census counts. The median household income here is $91,000 per year, and 35% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher. The median value of owner-occupied housing is $273,000. Basically, the further north that we have gone, the wealthier this suburb. As you can see, Washington Township is still mainly rural in the year 2020. We'll see how long that's able to last. Well, that's about it for this video. If you enjoy, make sure to drop a like and subscribe as it helps out these videos with the YouTube algorithm. Make sure that you also hit that notification bell so that you can be notified whenever I upload a new video of an area near you. We'll see you next time. Peace.